Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Chairman, Deputies and Senators, I want to address you on the issue of the €100,000 that I gave to the FAI in April 2017, which was repaid to me in June 2017. First of all, I want to say how truly saddened I am that Sports Ireland, who provide annual state funding of £2.9 million to the Football Association of Ireland, have announced that they have temporarily withdrawn their funding to the association, pending reports from the FAI, Grant Thornton and Mazars. I want to make it clear that I have urged a speedy response to the queries received from Sports Ireland, and I have already met this, met this week with Grant Thornton and with the FAI on these issues, and I will respond to any request for a meeting as soon as I hear from Mazars. To continue, on Tuesday the 25th of April 2017, <coughs> We had an internal finance meeting at the FAI. This meeting was attended by our Director of Finance, Eamon Breen, our Financial Controller, uh, Yvonne Song, and myself as CEO. I was advised at this meeting that if all cheques and FAI bank transfers issued to third parties at that time were presented for payment, that the FAI would exceed its overdraft limit of 1.5 million on its bank accounts which were held with Bank of Ireland. At the meeting, I expressed concern and surprise as to how the FAI could have arrived at this position. I recall thinking at a time, if I had been approached even a few days earlier, I may have been able to better address this issue. I asked if any funds were due to the FAI which could resolve the matter. I was informed that there was nothing due imminently that could be confirmed at that stage. As the matter was pressing, and we only had a few hours to resolve the potential issues that would arise if the bank overdraft limit was exceeded, as a precautionary measure and to assist the FAI, I wrote a cheque for €100,000 from my personal account to the FAI. This cheque was made payable to the FAI. I gave it to our Director of Finance, Eamon Breen, telling him to only lodge the cheque if it became clear that the bank overdraft was going to be exceeded. Later that afternoon, I travelled to London, and on the next day I travelled on to Geneva, Switzerland, where I was attending UEFA business on behalf of the FAI. I recall phoning our Honorary Secretary, uh, Michael Cody, and informing him that I had made a precautionary payment to the FAI by way of a personal cheque for €100,000 to assist in the event that the bank overdraft was going to be exceeded. I informed him that I was very concerned and I had to act quickly to assist the Football Association of Ireland. I also recall informing the then President Tony Fitzgerald, who was Chairman of the Board at the time. The following day, when I was in Geneva, I received a call from our Director of Finance, Eamon Breen, informing me that there was a requirement to lodge the cheque by 100,000 and he subsequently confirmed that request to me by email. I agreed that the cheque should be lodged. I asked our Director of Finance when I would be paid back, and he said as soon as the funds came in. I subsequently received a cheque for €100,000 on the 16th of June 2017 from the Football Association of Ireland, repaying the amount in full which I lodged to my personal account on the 23rd of June 2017. I did not receive any interest payment, and I would never have expected it. I was only acting to assist the FAI and for the benefit of Irish football. I recall asking the Director of Finance, Eamon Breen, did the FAI have any reporting or disclosure obligations arising out of the 100,000 payment? There was a board meeting on Monday, the 19th of June 2017, and the 100,000 payment did not arise. On Monday, the 4th of March 2019, I informed the Board of the FAI of the precautionary payment I had made following a media query received from the Sunday Times. On Saturday, the 16th of March 2019, I initiated court proceedings at the Sunday, against the Sunday Times at my own cost in relation to this matter because I believed at the time that this information had emanated from documentation which had been filed 
in the family courts. I accept that the overdraft limit issue arose on my watch as Chief Executive Officer. I wish that it had not happened, but I acted in the best interests of the Association. We have an excellent and committed finance and administration team and body of employees at the FAI, and many voluntary workers and players at all levels throughout the country. I regret the embarrassment that this entire issue has caused to them and the Association, but I did it in the best interests of football. I will continue to assist fully the Football Association of Ireland in its engagements with Sports Ireland and Grant Thornton, and when called upon to do so. We'll do likewise with Mazars and the Office of Director of Corporate Enforcement in their respective inquiries. On legal advice, I'm precluded from making any further comments at this hearing in relation to the finances of the Association or my former role as CEO or the 100,000 payment, either directly or indirectly. In the interests of fair procedures and natural justice, which I have made this statement to the committee, and I have attended this meeting voluntarily, as I have attended many Oireachtas committees in the past. I am not in a position to answer any such questions here at this time. Given that some members of this committee have made highly prejudicial public pronouncements about me personally prior to my attendance here today, and in light of the recent Supreme Court hearing or ruling in the Cairns case, I would ask that the committee respects this position. I am happy to answer any other questions in relation to my current role as Executive Vice President responsible for UEFA and FIFA matters. I am, as most of you would know, passionate about football and have always been. In my role as Executive Vice President, I look forward to welcoming the Under-17 European Boys Championship to Ireland next month, which will see 16 teams play and provide at least 9,000 bed spaces for tourism for this country. Next year, Dublin is one of the 12 European cities hosting the 2020 Euros, which will see four matches played at the Viva Stadium, hopefully including the Republic of Ireland. We are currently bidding for the 2023 Under-21 Men's Tournament with the Irish Football Association. This is a very significant project and it demonstrates how the round ball can unify both associations on this island. I would also like to see a Women's Champions League final be played in Dublin <coughs> at the Aviva Stadium, perhaps to mark the 50th anniversary of the Women's Football Association in Ireland in 2023. As an Executive Committee member of UEFA, I, along with my counterparts in Northern Ireland, Wales, Scotland and England, are currently working on a feasibility study which we hope will result in the 2030 World Cup being hosted across these islands. And finally, I'd like to make the point from a financial perspective, uh, UEFA would provide the FAI somewhere between 15 to 20 million euros annually, depending on participation for major tournaments. So they're a significant funder of the Football Association of Ireland. Thank you, Chairman. Of course. And